Maybe you're into madness, or maybe you like old school style, like the Scatolites. You know, whatever style of ska you're into. As a saxophone player, there's no denying it's a really cool, fun style to check out. And in today's video, I'm actually going to be talking about that. I'm going to be talking about how you can get a great ska sax sound and what goes into understanding this playing style. Uh, and actually, I'm going to be sharing some clips from a fantastic masterclass that we did with one of the top ska sax players around at the moment, Dean Hilson from the Melbourne Ska Orchestra. So stick around, we've got lots to talk about today and it's going to be a really interesting session. So why are we even talking about ska? Well, the thing is, amongst our thousands of sax school members, ska is a really popular topic. In fact, we've got loads and loads of members from all over the world who are really into ska. They're big ska fans and they're playing in ska bands or they're working in ska projects or they just love to learn the ska tunes that we cover inside sax school. Yes, we do have a bunch of ska lessons in there. You know, the classics like One Step Beyond where we pull it apart and teach you all the, the sort of basics about how to get the melody right, but also the solo and improvising tactics, and other tunes like Night Boat to Cairo. And we've even got an introduction to ska course in there, which is a great gateway into, into ska. If you want to go check those out, they're available for members inside the members area, or you can grab the 14-day trial we've got running at the moment. There's a link up here. Now, the main reason why I like to talk about ska, though, is because ska is a great, fun style to play, and it's also a brilliant gateway into loads of other styles when it comes to performing and improvising. Because, you see, the skills that you use when you're improvising in ska, they transfer perfectly into straight-ahead jazz, or advanced jazz, or funk, or pop playing. So they all tie in together. And and so it's a great starting point for your journey. Anyway, you don't have to take my word for it, and that's exactly why I invited Dean from the Melbourne Ska Orchestra to come and do this exclusive session for Sax School. So the Melbourne Ska Orchestra, that's who you heard just a second ago, they're a really amazing outfit. And for the last few years now, they've been touring around the world playing massive gigs and releasing albums and winning awards. I mean, they're a really, really great band. And Dean's one of the founding members. He's the, uh, the lead saxophone player and does a lot of the arranging for them as well. So I was really keen to find out a bit more about the history of that group from Dean. So the, the band actually started as a, many years ago as a bit of a joke, really. It was just to see how many people we could get on stage all doing the skank at the one time. Oh, yeah, the skank. That's that chuck, 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 the offbeat groove that you hear in Scar. So, yeah, it started out that way, but in about 2011, we started getting sort of semi-serious and started, um, you know, rehearsing and recording and trying to, you know, uh, lift our game a little bit. Um, and since then, we've done a few albums, oh, I don't know, maybe five or six albums. We've managed to be nominated for about seven ARIA awards, of two of which we've won. We've done a lot of international touring. We've been to... Canada a couple of times, the States, to Japan, to Europe. All of that's been on hold since COVID, of course, but um, generally when, when COVID wasn't happening, we'd be doing at, at least one Australian tour a year and then something international. Now, like with understanding any playing style as a saxophone player, you really need to understand the history of what's going on with the music. Like what connects the people in Madness, the sax, the sax style in this, to the sax style and the Scatolites and all the things in between and what came after. That's really how you understand a style. So I wanted to find out from, from Dean, what, what is the history of ska? There's like four waves of ska, which all have their own sort of, you know, uh, unique sort of traits. Uh, the one that hooked me in was the first sort of wave, the Jamaican wave. For me, include Jamaican R&B, then Jamaican ska, which was early 60s, like 63. And then within a couple of years, it had morphed into rock steady, bit of a slower sort of beat. And then, of course, you know, it branches out then into reggae and skinhead reggae and, you know. But then the, the sort of the second wave of ska being the two-tone stuff that happened in, uh, in England, it borrows a lot of its, um, you know, influences from the punk era of the time and there's a lot it's a lot faster it's a lot more sort of aggressive the next era in the sort of the 90s was this you know the skate punk or the ska punk sort of stuff coming out of the states and again very fast usually straight stuff but 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 rather than the swung lilting sort of 
uh, original Jamaican feel of, that many of them were. And many people sort of say at the moment we're in a sort of an international fourth wave of ska. So you've got the likes of Tokyo Paradise, Melbourne Ska Orchestra, Western Standard Time in the States, and there's and it's becoming um, a lot more international that people are uh, including different a lot of different styles and bringing it into the ska under the ska umbrella. You know, like um, cumbia. There's a lot of ska jazz bands around the world these days. Just before we start talking about what makes a really good ska saxophone player, I'd want to know from you, what type of ska do you listen to? Do you have a favourite ska track or a favourite ska artist? Let me know in a comment, I'd love to know. <laughs> a lot of fun okay so that was the tune i wrote for sax school which is part of our monthly challenge we're working on at the moment called scar school and we've actually created a bunch of lessons around that song easy lessons for beginners and advanced lessons and improvising lessons and all sorts of stuff you can all check that out inside sax school with our 14 day trial that's running okay so we know about the basic styles of scar now and we've got some ideas of some artists that we could go and check out but i'm really curious to know what skills do we need to have to be a really good ska player? You see, the thing I love about Dean Hilson's playing is when I first came across him like 30 years ago, he was doing this amazing down and dirty blues gig. And hey, he's known as a blues player touring around the country doing that sort of stuff. But I wanted to know how those amazing blues skills that he's got transferred into ska and did it help him with that journey? At the time that I was doing uh, all the rhythm and blues stuff, of course, you know, you, you naturally get exposed to the likes of Slim Gaylord, who had sessions with Charlie Parker. Rhythm and blues did morph into sort of, you know, so many things. Like Scar is pretty much based on American rhythm and blues of the 50s anyway, or er the early Jamaican Scar is, you know, much of it. Um, so, you know, all of these things really, for me, come under one umbrella, you know, of, of the roots music. So I do a fair bit of Zydeco as well. And the, the skills that I learned, the, all my R&B chops, easily translate to Zydeco or ska or, you know, funk or reggae or whatever the case, because they've all sort of sprung from the same roots. They use pretty much the same sort of harmony. Of course, the, the um, jump blues and, and bebop, of course, they start extending the harmony a bit and you need a bit more sort of you know theoretical knowledge and chops to get around the music but it's still all for me anyway the way i relate to it it all comes from the same place i mean you can always hear the blues in cannonballs playing you yep. can always hear the blues in parker's playing do you know what i mean and and when i met you i was i was in a phase of playing playing in a sort of a a, a, a classic pub blues band you know it, it was it was loud and it was dirty and it was you know yeah. it's just like a whole lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, a whole lot of fun. Oh, for you and for the audience. Oh man, that masterclass was just packed with so much great stuff. Dean went on to share some of his favorite skills for building really great tone and altissimo, and also for building finger dexterity and improvising skills over that scar style. I mean, he's a master at this and he really broke it down in a way that everybody could understand. So if you're a Sax School member, you can find the full masterclass inside the members area right now. Uh, if you're not a member, then go grab that 14 day trial that I mentioned before, because at the very least, you'll get 14 days to explore that masterclass and all of the hundreds of other lessons and courses on SCAR and all other styles you could imagine. Plus, you'll get some support from our tutors and a chance to connect with our thousands of other learners from all around the world. So what's your next step? Now we understand a bit more about the style of SCAR. We understand some of the players we need to go and listen to. So go start doing some listening, finding the SCAR players that you love the sound of, and then get some really good help with the courses in SAC School. Uh, to help you to develop those skills and start to put them into action. I really can't wait to hear how you get on. Don't forget to go and check out the other lessons I've got on the channel here. And of course, if you enjoyed today, leave me a comment. Let me know. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. But most importantly, keep practicing and having some fun. And I'll catch you next time.
Thank you.